like to show you how to use the buffer tool now and we'll start with a simple buffer. So here I've loaded roads and lakes data to my uh, map here and so I have this um, road network and I want to just buffer within 500 meters or 300 meters some distance from the road. So I create a polygon that includes all the areas that are within some distance of the roads. And so in the tools I've gone to the analysis tools and then the proximity tools and double clicked here on the buffer tool and I specify my input feature in this case the roads and my output feature I can name it whatever I want roads buffer the default is fine and I have two ways I can just use a linear distance in which I enter the distance I want to buffer or I could buffer based on a field we'll go over that in a bit so here I might say okay I want to a buffer distance of 300 and the units in this case are the units of the data layer. Now they're meters here set. I can set them but um, I don't have to if I know that the units are meters. The side type is full. You can also do to the left or the right. Uh, there's a directionality in every line. We haven't set that up but there are times when you want to set the directionality. I only want to work on the outside or left side or right side, something like that. The end types, again, you can have various type, round or flat. So do you have a circular end or do you cut it off square? The method, we almost always use planar rather than geodesic. So the geodesic is only for very large areas or specific instances. And then this next one's pretty important. It's the dissolve. If we have overlapping pieces, so if I buffer on this piece and buffer on this piece and they overlap each other, do I want to dissolve and make one area or do I want to keep those two pieces separate? The default is no dissolve. We typically want to dissolve all output features into a single feature. So then I run and when buffer is complete then I see I have a layer here and this buffer layer then has a polygon around each of the sets of features that uh, is defines the area 300 meters. Now you notice I got the dissolve on so these where they overlap go ahead and dissolve and I get one polygon for this network that's close together. Now if I right click on the attribute table and take a look I notice there's only one polygon listed here. So the note from the buffer that it creates what's called multi-part shapes we have basically an attribute table where there's one entry for all the polygons together. They all point to this and this is an aggregate area and an aggregate length, shape length. So we'll take note of that and we'll have to do this multi-part to single part later on. I'm not going to show you that now. I want to go on to show you another variant of buffering. This is a variable distance buffering and in the variable distance buffering we sh show you how to basically make the buffer distance larger or smaller depending on the value in an attribute table. We tell you to create this attribute table and add for the size a variable distance and so we've gone over how to manipulate tables in a previous lab and so here we're just going to say that okay that's done. So for small lakes we only want a 50 meter buffer for intermediate lakes 150 and for large lakes a 300. So once you've added that then I can go ahead and buffer again. So I'll run the buffer but this time I'll buffer on the lakes. I'll call the output lakes buffer. The units now instead of doing linear units I'll use a field and then I specify the field. In this case it's the buff distance we created. The side type full, the method planer and I still want to basically combine or dissolve all output features into a single feature where they overlap. And so I'll go ahead and run that. And now you see I get this variable distance buffer. Now sometimes when we're buffering, I guess I'll show again, wait a minute, the attribute table here. And you see again it's single part, I'm sorry, multi-part. So I want to switch that to single part before we do some further operations. Sometimes when we're buffering though, we only want to buffer on the outside and that's our case here. We want to buffer on the outside and not on the inside. So we don't really want this lakes buffer. I'll go ahead and turn that off. We want to buffer on the lakes and we'll call this lakes buffer out. And we still want to use the same field, but the side type rather than full, we'll want to exclude the input polygon from the buffer. All right, so this will just give us the buffer of the areas outside the lakes. Again, planar, dissolve, and run. And now we have a buffer, this lakes buffer here, that only is the external areas and that's what we want in this analysis.
So one take home point is that these uh, various options matter and will give you different shapes. You can run the same buffer command with just slightly different changes in the options and get very different outputs. Again, 